this is the spider ETF relative strength analysis for March now let's talk about sector rotation that's the action of shifting investment assets from one sector to another to take advantage of cyclical trends in the overall economy and in the stock market in order to beat the markets sector, sector rotation seeks to capitalize on the theory that not all sectors of the economy perform well at the same time or in the stock market because sectors of the stock market perform differently during the phases of the economic and market cycle so I came up with a ranking system using the moving averages pending the order of the 50 100 and 200 also pending where the particular um, sector ETF is relative to the SPY so that's what I'm using I'm looking at the sector ETF and I'm comparing that to the ETF for the S&P 500 which is the SPY and in the spider sector there are two four six eight ten there are eleven major sectors so with that said let's get started so the first one is the uh, spider communication sector ETF compared to the SPY right and you can see for the week price closed above the 200 day moving average so in the order of the moving averages we have from top to bottom the 200 the 50 and the 100 and prices above the 200 so if we go to the chart we're looking for the 250 100 prices above the 200 so 1 plus a negative 2 that's a negative 1 All right, let's go to the charts. Look at the next comparison. We have the XLY versus the SPY. And price is between the 200 and the 100. And in the order of the moving averages, you got the 200, 100, and the 50. So if we go to the chart, we can see that the order of the moving averages was the 200, 150. Price was between the 200 and the 100. So we give that a negative 2 plus a negative 3. That's a negative 5. And that was for the XLY, which is consumer discretionary. Okay, we're going to go to the charts again. The next one is the XLP, which is the staples versus the SPY can see that the order of the moving averages you got the 100 you got the 200 and you have the 50 and prices below all three so if we go to the table we're looking for the 100 the 200 and the 50 prices below all three negative 2 plus 1 you got a negative 1 and that's for the staples. All right, we'll go to the chart. Look at the next one, XLE, which is the energy sector versus the SPY. Price is between the 50 and the 200. And the order of the moving averages, you got the 100, 50, and 200. So if we go to the table, we're looking for the 150. 200 prices below the 50 and the 200 so we got a 2 plus 2 that's a 4 and that was for energy okay let's go back to the charts and we're going to look at the XLF versus the SPY that's the financials uh, prices below the 100 I'm sorry yep the 100 and the 50 and the order of the moving averages we got the 50 100 200 all right so if we go to the table 
we had the order of the moving averages at the 50, the 100, and 200. Price was between the 50 and the 100, so we'll give that a 6. The 3 plus the 3. Financials. Okay, let's go to the chart. Next, we got the XLV, which is the health sector spider versus the SPY. We have the order of moving averages, the 100, the 50, 200, prices below all three. So if we go to the table, we're looking for the 100, 50, 200, prices below all three, negative one plus two, that gives us a one. Okay, if we go to back to the chart, and this is XLI, which is industrials. First, the SPY, prices above all three. This appears to be the first seven. We had the 50, 100, 200. Prices above the 50, so four plus three, that's a seven. That was for industrials. Okay, we go back to the chart, looking for this XLB, which is uh, the materials sector versus the SPY. Again, we got the 50, the 100, and the 200 prices above all three, so that's a seven. Okay, let's go back to the chart. Okay, XLRE, which is the real estate sector. You have the uh, prices all prices below all three moving averages. You've got the 200, the 50, the 100. So if we go to the table, we're looking for the 200, 50, 100. Price was below all three. We give that a negative five, and that was for the real estate sector. Okay, we'll go back to the charts. XLK, which is uh, tech versus the SP 500. XLK versus the SPY. You have the 200, the 50, and the 100. Prices above, prices above all three. 200, 50, 100. Go to the table. Looking for the 50. 200, 100, 3 plus negative 1, that's a 3 for the tech sector. Let's go back to the chart. XLU versus the SPY. We got the 200, the 100, and the 50, prices below all 3. This combination is a negative 7. 200, 150, negative 7. Alright, so if we go to, if we go from least or greatest to lowest. Okay, so as an example, uh, I guess the first six weeks or so of 2023, uh, the stock market was just in a uptrend. And so if I was potentially trading um, at the sectors, I would have been looking to go long financials, right? That makes sense, right? Um, as interest rates go up, uh, profits at the banks increase. Uh, materials, where we are in a ever-increasing inflation environment, so the cost of goods and commodities are going up um, so materials would have been a good sector to invest in um, let's talk about utilities so utilities they are somewhat recession proof right we have to heat and run our dishwasher every day but utilities sector is debt laden 
Um, so as interest rates go up, the cost of the debt increases, which hits utilities' profits. So it makes sense that it is a negative seven. Uh, when we talk about consumer stables and consumer discretionary, uh, discretionary spending is, I don't know, Netflix, uh, going out to eat. Um, and so that would make sense that it is ranked lower than the staples. You know, if we are going to a recession, um, people are um, becoming a bit more conscious of their the money and that's in their wallet and what they're spending it on. Um, staples typically outperforms in a recessionary environment. Um, so that's the ranking for uh, March and potential sectors in play. Um, I like financials in particular because um, I think interest rates are going higher. Um, energy, best performing sector of 2022, is just pulling back. Right. You also have the theme of China reopening. Um, tech, well, that makes sense. It's in the middle, right? It's high growth. People want access to uh, the potential returns. Um, but the way tech companies grow is they grow through um, debt as well. Um, so debt has become a bit more costly, costlier, right, than in the past, which is going to inhibit those companies in the tech sector from growing, which will lower revenues, lower profits. Um, so again, that's the way I would play uh, the stock market and the sectors over the next four weeks. Um, I will be back with another analysis um, in April. We'll see if any of these change. Uh, until then, thanks for watching.